And with this hint, we have collected every one of them, all 50. So if you've been watching these videos at the beginning, then you should have all of them as well. Hopefully this little guide with these videos helped you if you were looking for these hints yourself. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Prototype. And welcome to Day 15. I kinda wish when I was in a helicopter I'd be able to spin very close like that helicopter. But yes, we're in Day 15, and as you can see, the infection is actually starting to go down. Mainly this is because, well, there may not be as many infected population alive, but also not as many people are getting newly infected. So as you can see, a lot of open spots between the blue and red circles are now around. Now before we get started, there are some things that we have to take care of before the next mission starts. First off is to get some upgrades. Specifically ones that involve consuming military targets. I would have done this if there were any consume events for infiltrating a military base, but um, at this point there isn't. So I'm going to have to do this now in order to actually show them off in good time. one main difficulty of infiltrating a military base is that you're bound to get spotted really quickly. And that's because of the UAVs. There's two of them lurking around and, well, there's one of them. The other one's around here somewhere, still looking at me. Where is he? Oh, there he is. And also a helicopter, he brought a friend. Alright, if nothing else goes wrong, I should be able to get in. Hey guys! There we go. No problems whatsoever. Until I cause them. So we have two targets, and really only two upgrades, so this will actually be our last time that it's actually useful to come in here. First up is maximizing our machine gun, so it has the maximum clip. And I shouldn't be able to stealth consume here. You guys didn't notice anything, did you? No? Didn't think so. But now our machine gun clip is at a maximum of 600 rounds. Which is crazy. It makes the machine gun pretty great. Our last upgrade... Is to maximize our artillery strike. Sadly this doesn't give, it us, give us another one to use. It just makes them hit a longer and bigger range. Not something I like, to be honest. It kind of makes it more inaccurate for me. So we're only stuck with three, sadly. But let's try out our new machine gun. It's really silly because the game can't keep up with the amount of people that I'm killing. is nuts! There we 
we go. Pretty great. Yeah, I've kind of loved the machine gun a lot while doing this, actually. I've grown a new love for it. And neutralizing the base didn't even use up half the clip, which is even more crazy. Alright, so let's leisurely make our way back to our mission marker. And take a look back at New York City. Apparently what it's become. From the sky, it doesn't look like a lot of things have really changed, other than pinkish red smoke being everywhere. But that's still for the infected zones. Pretty much the game's way of saying, an infected zone is here, place stuff here, because you can see all the bubbles. At first I thought that was like the blood tox kind of fumes in the air kind of thing, which kind of would, be would have been a better choice to think about. And to be honest, because we're immune at this point, it really doesn't matter all that much. But anyway, last time we crippled the helicopter force that Taggart was going to use in order to get out of here because he kind of wants to leave the quarantine. And nobody's happy about that in terms of the military. So that means he's going to need another way of getting out. Which is our time to strike. And all of this we're doing because we have to get onto the Reagan. Because apparently, um, Randall's there. To be honest, the... Reagan is really the last place in the map we haven't actually investigated a lot. It's on the edge, the very edge of the map, pretty much in the leaving quarantine zone area. So you're bound to get shot, and in terms of the last cutscene that we watched, they pretty much said to us right there, then and there, that if you go to the Reagan, you're going to be shot out of the sky. And that is very true. Also, there's a certain distance before you just do not get any more movement. And you do get shot out of the sky. This is not really a good direction in terms of trying to get onto the Reagan this way. Because there's actually a place on the other side that actually has it much closer. So let's get over there. I think I just <laughs> jumped off that guy's head. That was pretty great. Alright, let's see what we got. This is a much closer range than the last time. Nope. You were expecting those rockets to not be 180 kills? Uh, oh, nope. Eh, no. Nada. Okay, let's try with the helicopter this time. How about this? Because this will give us an extra bit of distance before the helicopter actually explodes. Except it also takes us out too. Uh, no, no. Launch two, watch it go down. Uh, nailed it! <laughs> I didn't stick the landing, but I made it. So we can get onto the Reagan, we just die really easily. But there is a way that we can change how fast we die. So first get another helicopter and take it the highest we can. You don't necessarily need to take it the highest, but this makes sure that any I'm missiles don't come out quickly. And... Aha! There we go! Adrenaline Surge helps you get onto the Reagan this way. So now we can explore this place. 
It's kind of cool, and you're not necessarily supposed to be able to get here because you're going to be shot from all sides. Ow. But yeah, there's a bunch of helicopters here, a lot, a lot of other aircraft that you necessarily can't really use, but your stay here is going to be short-lived because, well, you're going to get shot a lot. Shot so quickly, in fact, that the adrenaline surge sometimes cannot recharge fast enough. So that's our little tour of the Reagan. We're going to be seeing a little bit more of it very soon, actually. But anyway, it's time to take down Taggart. Where is he going to be, and what is he doing? But first, let's go through our upgrades and make sure that we have all of them. Maximum effectiveness, all of the upgrades for the artillery strikes, which I'm not going to be using because they're kind of not useless. Or, they are useless, really. And you can kind of see that the pictures on the top right actually change, so... It does expect, like, the ammo counts and backgrounds actually change. It's kind of cool. We have all the attacks now. Everything but Adrenaline Surge we have. Maximize movement, but we have one last power to get. The Blade Sprint Frenzy. The Blade Sprint Frenzy pretty much rounds out the blade power, so now you can use the Frenzy while sprinting. Pretty much the same use. Um, doesn't do a lot of damage that you would expect it to do, so if you're using it against tanks and whatnot, it's not really that great. It is smooth, though. I just hate that you stop really quickly. Other than that, it's a pretty simple move. Now, what does Cross have to say about what Taggart's doing? Because apparently he's keeping an eye on him. Because that was his job. He just needs us to take it down. Because we're getting the short end of the deal, honestly. Let's see what to do. Taggart's air power is crippled. He's gonna make a run for it on the ground. The rogue Black Watch units are massing at one of his bases and setting up roadblocks to allow him to get to the Brooklyn Bridge. He'll try and push through there. We need to hit him at the base now, before the defenses are complete. Force him out of his hole. When he makes a run for it, consume him. Keep the pressure on, and he'll keep running. But don't let him escape. If he makes it out of Manhattan, our ticket onto the Reagan is gone. He doesn't have a chance. I honestly really like the musical sting for this song. I haven't said a lot about the music, but honestly I really like it. But anyway, time to start off this mission by destroying a military base, and I don't really like this part of the mission, simply because, well, it takes too long for its own good. This is the strongest military base in the entire game, and it's going to take more than a couple of Devastators in order to take it down, especially on hard mode. And especially when I miss, but apparently it still does damage. But yeah, you can see how little damage that actually did. We're going to be needing about six or seven Devastators, and... Well... With the heightened military presence, you're not going to be able to get that done very quickly or efficiently. But yeah, I haven't talked a lot about the music, and... Simply saying, there isn't really a lot about the music that really stands out for me. They're good tracks and suit the tone of the game, and they simply match. I like that about it, but the the best thing I can say about it is that the instrumentation of like the just all the instruments coming together in order to make it really nice and cool is pretty much what does does it for the music for me. Now the game definitely told me to use missile launchers in order to take this thing down, but it only takes a little bit of health off of it, and 
To be honest, using missile launchers is better for other enemies other than the base itself. Primarily the super soldiers that are going to be on you as well. The jerks. And apparently the other troops that are on this rooftop are not here anymore, so great. Now, to get into what Cross was actually saying about um, before this mission actually began, Rogue Blackwatch military? So apparently what he's just said there is that there are two factions apparently split between following, I guess, Randall and also Taggart, who want to flee or want to continue on because um, stubbornness and Randall's kind of crazy. Did we really get any information about that at all in the past? Ow, this is gonna hurt. Apparently I didn't die there, thanks to the shield. But honestly, I don't think we got any information about the internal strife of the military, and it kind of would have been good to have. It would have fleshed out things a little bit more. But there's something about how Cross says his, um, tells us his information about what to do that kind of just puts me in a weird spot and a little bit suspicious because especially in the case of like him just telling us to consume Taggart overall and that guy is just going to be on the side of the wall I don't care well there's more missile launcher guys up here don't know how they got here but they are here The way he said consume them, like, I know that Cross pretty much knows what we do at this point. But the way he said it was kind of... Oh. Anyway, getting really close to ending this off. But really the main thing to use for missile launchers is for the super soldiers. Destroy them with the missiles, get the large amount of health that they give back, and then you're able to just do more Devastators. Thermobaric tank! Haven't seen one of those in a while, and it made a really nice, funny entrance. Except we're still getting shot. So, although I don't really like the first part of this mission, and honestly because I don't feel like it is part of the mission, because now the mission actually begins of tracking and following Taggart. Well, as much as I would like to fight the super soldier, um, it's kind of not a, not of a good... Not a good idea. Just follow Taggart and get to the next checkpoint. Dig in. Like it's gonna make a difference. Each checkpoint is going to be followed by really all of this. And all of this I don't really like, including floating tanks. I think the biggest threat really is actually the Thermobaric tank, because uh, Taggart will fire on you if you're a certain distance away. If you're really close, you really can't do anything, but if you're far away and using long-range attacks, he will try and do a couple shots at you, and that's when things get messy. Combine that with all of the infantry around here, which is kind of screwing up my lock-on. Uh, this... These parts of the missions can be a bit of an annoyance. The most expedient way is hijacking, but you're make sure you have a good amount of health before doing it because you can easily die. Nothing will protect you from me. Not men, not weapons, 
Not armor! Honestly, it was at also at this point that um Alex's lines I find in this mission are kind of laughable. But more so when I started looking up some things, they're more misdirect like poor direction in terms of the game's part. It's not the voice actor's fault. Because I actually looked up the voice actor and I was surprised to see who it actually was. Um Alex is voiced by Barry Pepper, and if you're not sure who Barry Pepper is, you might recognize him if you've gone to any like movie recently. Or specific movies recently. And he has been like one of the like the major secondary characters. Because that's mainly what he does. He's not a notable actor in terms of like general. I know who this guy is. You have to do some research. No one can protect you from me. There are some movies that he's recently done. Um, recently done, such as he was. Um, Captain Fuller on The Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp and Army Hammer. He was also in, um, what was it, Broken City with Mark Wahlberg and Russell Crowe. That was one of his mo two most recent movies, and they were decent movies in my opinion. But you might remember him from notable movies such as Saving Private Ryan. He was Private Jackson in that movie. Enemy of the State, The Green Mile, Battlefield Earth. He's done a lot of military roles. Flags of Our Fathers, that kind of thing. He even has a daytime Emmy for his work on um, the miniseries The Kennedys, because he played Bobby Kennedy in that, and he has a and he has a daytime Emmy for that. So he's a, he's actually a decent actor, but um, he doesn't have a lot of voice acting behind him. So maybe in terms of that, that's why he's kind of laughable in this state. But I find that it's more the direction of what he his motivations for saying it at this point. They're kind of weird. Go away, tank. Keep running, you bastard! Pretty much at this point, um, you should be using the armor, because the shield, it kind of does its job, but the armor, I find, does it a little bit better. Except when you're doing long distances like this. Now you also may be wondering to yourself, why can't I just consume Tagger right now, hijack the Thermal tank? Um, apparently God's divine influences in just kind of make you not able to hijack the tank. Something just keeps shooting you, and it's not guys, it's not military, it's just, no, you're not supposed to do this yet. The game is just telling you, and that's kind of, um, bull on the game's part. I'm surprised I haven't died yet, to be honest. And hi, guy. He is rather big, actually, when you compare him to, like, a civilian body. But yeah, apparently the game tells you that you have to go through each checkpoint, and actually do the mission properly, and that's the military's fault that the tank is damaged, not mine. But yeah, you just can't do it. You get kinda close, but then another god missile. Another god missile just kinda shows up. This one is, of course, the most difficult one because you're dealing with five tanks at once. And as much as the air slice is effective, these mis these tanks are too tough in order to take them down in one shot. They're gonna take a two. And if you want to be more flashy about this, go ahead, but um, be prepared to die a little bit more in terms of not being able to do damage fast enough. There we go. Tiger! You suicidal moron! 
kind of my favorite line in the game now, because that is a stupid line. <laughs> but now it's finally time to consume Taggart. The game's letting us now. Hooray! Now we've blown wide open sequence 9. One last target in the web of intrigue. But here's Colonel Ian Taggart. All of this, everything here, we've been preparing to fight the wrong war. We can't beat this. We need to pull out and deal with it at a distance. Taggart, I put you in charge because I trust you to do what needs to be done. Cut the heart out of the infection. Sir, the position is untenable. These things, they're beyond our abilities. I don't want to hear one more excuse from you. You get your ass back into the field and get it done. Or don't come back. Man, those military guys can pose behind Randall. And now we have Tagger. And our ticket onto the Reagan. Pretty much Cross's job was to get Taggart back to the Reagan in order to pretty much face punishment from Randall for defecting, I guess. But And now he can actually do that, except it's not going to be Taggart, it's going to be Alex. So, next time, we're going to be onto the Reagan. And hopefully stop Randall, find out where this nuke is for Firebreak, deal with it, and hopefully save New York from utter destruction, because the infection is going to die out soon enough. See you next time, everyone, for the finale. Take your adventure to the next level. And maybe we should get away to a safar. What is a safar? Really, what is it? <laughs>